redeemer and sustainer. Amen. Choices. When we are free, we have choice. And in today's gospel lesson, Jesus invites us into freedom. He invites us to choose. I was going to start by saying it's been a rough few months. In fact, it's been a rough few years as we've struggled through COVID. But even going beyond that, as the political landscape changes, particular south of the border, I'm noticing that more and more of our conversations are higher pitched. There's more rhetoric. There's more anxiety. Even just this last week, in a few email exchanges and in a few conversations, I noticed that we're barely hanging on to agreeable conversation, dignified and decent conversation. We're sort of hanging on by the skin of our teeth, if you want, to try and continue to remain safe and kind and patient, listening, truly listening to each other. We're all struggling with it. The events of the last few weeks have pulled us again into a kind of trauma, I think. At least I feel traumatized. When I looked at the gun violence of a few weeks ago, of all those innocent children. I was traumatized once again. It was just over a year ago that we discovered that in the residential schools there were unmarked burial grounds. At first we thought a hundred, then it was 270, and now we know it's thousands and thousands. And the veneer of our polite Canadian society has been stripped away and we're embarrassed and we're ashamed and we are traumatized, let alone what has happened to First Nations people. It's a difficult time. As we watch the collapse of the American Empire, as we stand by on its borders, as we fear for our own lifestyles, as population increases, it's a traumatic time. And yet, we still have choices. And I think in today's gospel, and in later on in Paul's epistle to the Galatians, we are invited into making some good choices. Let me explain. You wouldn't know this from just reading the gospel lesson as it appears to you, but as this gospel lesson begins, we hear these words. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. That may seem inconsequential, but at this point in the gospel of Luke, this is a deliberate turning of Jesus from his Galilean ministry where he taught, where he healed, where he gathered people together to follow him. It's a deliberate turning from his Galilean ministry to focus on Jerusalem. And the implication being that he was not going to escape trauma, suffering in Jerusalem. And yet he chose to go anyway. This little verse is the midpoint of the Gospel of Luke. It's the turning point. Jesus moves away from his home to a place of greater sacrifice and service. He's quite intentional. He has made a choice to do this.
in that choice, he sends a few disciples ahead to prepare the villages and the towns for his arrival. A few of the, the, those who are preparing, a few of them go to a Samaritan village and they choose not to respond or receive Jesus, which is very unusual in a society that is marked by hospitality. But Jesus is rejected. But his choice, in contrast with his disciples' choice, James and John, his choice is to leave it be. We very much could appreciate James and John when they say, Lord, shall we call down fire from heaven on these people who have not welcomed you? And Jesus basically says, hush, hush. He rebukes them. Let them be. And Jesus chooses to let it go. And he admonishes his disciples that a course of violence and anger and vengeance is not what he is about. Jesus chooses to look past it and invites his disciples to look past it too. The passage goes on. And on one level, I don't really understand the series of questions and comments and riddles that Jesus kind of responds to the people he invites to follow him. But three times he asks people to follow him. One of them says, I will follow you wherever you go. And in a kind of riddle response, Jesus says, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no head. You will be a wanderer. You will be homeless. To another, he said, follow me. And naturally, poor chap wants to go home and bury his dad. And Jesus responds with another kind of riddle. Let the bed, dead bury their own dead. And third, again, an invitation to follow him is issued. And this chap says, I just want to go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus responds by, no one, by saying, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. On one level, I don't really understand what he means by these responses. But on another level, taken as a whole, I see them as this. The choice to follow Jesus and follow a way of love above everything else. Everything else. Follow me. And as it says in the Gospel of Mark, immediately they got up and followed him. He's inviting us to make a choice. The choice to follow him. But also in the choice of following him, the choice to live a gospel of love, a gospel of compassion. Sometime after Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, St. Paul wrote the letter to the Galatians, the people, the Christians who lived in Galatia. And it's a marvelous letter, and these are some of our favorite passages of St. Paul. Because here, we see that Paul is also inviting us to make a choice. To make a choice to live in the Spirit, or to live by the flesh. And St. Paul fills out what those things mean. But particularly, it rests on one phrase. 
to live in love. Our choice is to live in love. It appears in our civil society, particularly this week, that choices have been taken away, particularly for women. That is true, set that aside. Because Jesus is inviting us into a different and deeper set of choices. The choice is this. Will we follow him? And will we choose to respond and live in love? No matter what happens, friends, no matter what happens, people, when we follow God, when we follow Jesus, we follow with choice and are given freedom. Amen.